All right, so let me do this question. I'm just uh, working out the worksheet questions in an attempt to give you more examples of application of the conservation of energy principle, which you will see in your homework questions, questions from textbook. These are the questions that we had in our old worksheet that we used to uh, use as part of the in-person lecture. And um, I just want you to provide it, uh, more examples here. And I like this problem 10, uh, projectile motion because uh, I hope you see some uh, familiarity with something that you have been um, dealing with earlier in the semester uh, in week two, <laughs> the part where I was saying, oh, this isn't physics. Okay, <laughs> you can work on it in such a way that there is a physical principle involved. So this question says, a football kicker kicks a football with some initial speed traveling upward at an angle, okay, angle theta from um, the horizontal of uh, the edge of a building of a height, uh, I think this is what they're saying, calling height H, height H, and the football lands on the ground at height zero, okay. When the football lands, what is the speed of the football? And I want to highlight this, it says hint, use conservation of energy, not kinematics. And uh, this is the kind of question, part A especially, is the kind of question you have answered when we are doing kinematics. You would break the motion into vertical and horizontal components. You use the vertical component to figure out uh, how much time it takes and the horizontal component to that. Oh, but here, since it's asking for the speed of the football, you probably wouldn't need to do that. You would just uh, figure out um, so the vertical, it's first going up and then it's coming down and then it's dropping down additional height of H. You get that vertical component of velocity and then a horizontal component won't change. You just uh, keep that and then you use the Pythagorean theorem with the last remaining uh, information to get your final answer. And there's a reason. It says, hint, use conservation of energy. So let me set up this question with the conservation of energy and see how much simpler it is. So with conservation law strategy, so this week we are using conservation of energy and next week we'll be using conservation of energy and or conservation of momentum. Whenever you are using conservation law, the very first step you should go through when you're trying to use conservation law is to figure out what quantities are conserved. And some of the invo will involve your physical intuition. Um, so whether a given setup involves conservation of energy. So uh, with the conservation of energy, um, in order to say that, uh, in order to be able to make this statement that energy is conserved. And by energy, we really mean mechanical energy. Because if you are talking about the total energy, that's always conserved. Like it's meaningless to ask whether it's conserved or not because it, it's always conserved. But when you are talking about mechanical energy, it might not be conserved. And when you are asking this question, is mechanical energy conserved? The key question is, uh, key uh, question to answer is this uh, answer to this question. Is there non-conservative force doing net work. And um, here's a um, inf criteria information that will help you narrow down this question. Because when we talk about conservative force, in for the purpose of this class, you have only two forces. You got gravity and spring force. So this question is really asking, are there any forces other than gravity or spring force that's doing that work? So for this scenario, like a projectile motion, where we are ignoring air resistance, there is literally no other force other than gravity. So any work done will be done by gravity, a conservative force. So our answer here is big, yes. That allows us to use conservation uh, conservation law uh, problem solving strategy so that's the very first step you should engage and in you know a lot of situations it might actually be if you just guess without going through the analysis you might get lucky and guess right um, I recommend that you actually practice going through this reasoning process so our answer was yes we can use conservation law 
whenever you are using conservation law, you are thinking of the conserved quantity in, in two different snapshots. Uh, and the conservation law allows you to say that this conserved quantity in one snapshot is equal to the co same conserved quantity in a, a, a different snapshot. So the picture that I'm drawing here is a ball being launched with some speed, going through a projectile motion, and landing here with some final speed. So here, the snapshots that I think will be useful will be this snapshot, one, and then this snapshot, two. I could have called them initial and final. Let me call them just one and two this time. So I'll say, okay, based on this labeling, what I'm saying is the total energy in snapshot one is equal to the total energy in snapshot two. This is my statement of conservation of total energy. Then I say, okay, um, let's uh, write down what this uh, total mechanical energy is made up of. It's going to have gravitational potential energy and it's going to have kinetic energy. So writing it all out, I have gravitational potential energy. This is at some height, so it's going to be mgh plus kinetic energy, uh, initial speed of v naught, so it'll be 1 half m v naught squared is equal to, and then the final total energy will be, it's at height zero, so the gravitational potential energy will be zero, plus the final, um, let's label this v2. Uh, final speed of the football, it will be 1 half m v2 squared. Now, for those of you who are traumatized by our treatment of projectile motion in kinematics, might be wondering, uh, is this enough? Uh, don't we have to worry about velocity being vector and you know, the vertical direction separate from horizontal direction? My quick and short to sweet answer is no. That's the wonderful thing about using energy and using energy conservation. One, energy is a scalar which means all the vector stuff, you don't have to worry about it. Energy is a scalar. And energy uh, using conservation law means uh, this equation that you set up, uh, you know as long as what you answered about um, the quantity being conserved is correct, that this is an equation you can rely on. So really the only thing you should worry about is, well, I have one equation, so I really hope that I have only one unknown. So let's go through and see how many unknowns we have. Now, I see that I can cancel out one variable, so let me do that. I have mass in every single term, so I can cancel it out. I don't think we are given mass, but doesn't matter. Got canceled out anyway. So G is a constant, we know that. H, we are given this, so I'm going to say we know that. V naught, we are given this, so I'm going to say we know that. Um, uh, v2, this is the one quantity that we don't know, so we have one unknown, one equation, we can solve it. So let me just solve it. I'm going to do the solution in my head. You can pause the video and double check my algebra if I made a mistake. V2 here is equal to square root of 2GH plus V0 squared. And I can do a quick double check of units to make sure that I did the units right. You know, V0 squared, square root, it, that's good. Uh, G, gravitational acceleration, is ma um, meter per second squared. Height is a meter, so you have meter squared per second squared, square root of, yeah, that's going to give me meter per second. So that's the answer for uh, V2. It's, uh, it took only basically one line of algebra. Uh, compare this to how you had to approach kinematics question. This is a lot simpler. Okay, so let's answer part B. So it says, what is the maximum height that the football reaches? Oh, so I think I have to change at least one of the two snapshots. Uh, snapshot one, let me just leave that as it is because that's the snapshot where I have the most information. So uh, where the football reaches the maximum height, then we are talking about here, this height. Where the football is here, now notice that it's actually moving horizontally at that position. So we are going to have to deal with that. Um, so at that height, let's label that as our snapshot 3. So, uh, and nothing about conservation of energy has changed, so we can still continue to use conservation of energy. We're just working through uh, 
um, um, the different snapshots this time. Before we use the snapshots one and two, now we are going to say the total mechanical energy in snapshot one is equal to the total mechanical energy in snapshot not two, but in snapshot three. Okay, so let's uh, work through it again. Uh, let me just not pre-cancel the masses in case they don't cancel. I think they'll cancel, but let's just leave it be. So the left-hand side of the equation, that's fine. Don't need to change anything. That's the total energy in snapshot one. It's the right-hand side that now needs to change. So what we are saying is um, the maximum height that it reaches. Let me introduce a new label for that, H max. So it'll have some gravitational potential energy at that height. It'll be mg times h max plus. It'll have some velocity as I labeled. It'll have some speed. So I need to write down its kinetic energy. One half m vx squared. Okay, so that's my equation one. And we go through the same thing that we did the last time. Uh, really, the only thing you need to check um, for this part B, is um, do we have the right number of equations and unknowns? We have one equation, so we are hoping to see that we have one unknown. Let's see. So mass, I can see that it will cancel out again, so let's just cancel out the masses. It's not an unknown, cancels out of the expression. G is known, H is known, um, V naught is known, G is known. H max is not known. This is one of your unknowns. And uh, Vx, let's say it's not known. I don't have anything where I can refer to it and just write it down. So I have two unknowns and only one equation, which means we basically need more information. And the way information is presented in a physics problem solving context is in the form of an equation. So we need to find additional equation, one that we can label as our equation two. And I think staring at it, I get some idea. We were given the angle that we never used. And I think given our initial speed and the angle, I think I can express, uh, write down an expression for Vx. And that expression for Vx is to say, you know, consider this triangle. V0, x component, y component. This is theta. Vx is the adjacent side. So adjacent over the hypotenuse is cosine theta, or um, solving that for Vx, you, you would get uh, V naught hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. So this is a second equation. In writing down the second equation, we didn't introduce any new unknowns. So we have two equations, two unknowns, we can solve for it. I think the easiest is to plug this in there, get a new equation. Let's scroll down and do that. We get uh, from equation 1, plugging in equation 2 for Vx, we get gh plus 1 half of v naught squared is equal to gh max plus 1 half that squared. v naught squared cosine squared theta. Okay, um, let me see if I can do this algebra in my head to solve for uh, h max. Uh, I don't think it's all that hard, so let me do it in my head. If you want, you can pause it uh, to algebra yourself and compare it with mine to see if I made any mistakes. So solving it for h max, what you get is h max is equal to your initial starting height plus this uh, relatively complicated expression, but not too complicated, um, v naught squared over 2g times one minus cosine squared theta. If you're wondering how I got to that, I moved this term over factor dot one half of v naught squared, then divided through by g to get this from that term and g down here. And I can double check the units. Uh, on the numerator, it's meter squared per second squared. Divided by meter per second squared, you get our left with the meter. So, so yeah, that's the expression for HMAX. Now, this is beginning to get to the level where we didn't save um, a lot of work compared to how much work we had to do for the, um, do for the kinematics because this uh, kind of work is kind of like breaking up motion into vertical and horizontal components. But uh, what this is showing is that the kind of question you might have thought you definitely need the kinematics to solve for, 
No, not really. There are ways to do it using conservation of energy. You just have to be more careful, bring in additional information as needed. Part C asks, in above calculations, does it matter whether the kinetic energy in horizontal component of motion is included in the calculation? Explain why or why not. Um, let me give you the answer and leave it as an exercise for you. So the answer, you know, short answer here is no, it doesn't matter. So somehow if you worked out the Y component of motion and just to use that work all the way through, and I guess technically for part A, you'd have to include that X component back in, uh, which is basically what you do for kinematics analysis. So you're just going long way around. <laughs> um, if you do calculation that way, you'll get the same answer we got before. For part B, um, the, for this maximum height, I think actually what we are doing is basically that, uh, subtracting of the X component. So um, yeah, so if you subtract off the X component, then yeah, you'll be doing exactly the same thing with it. So the answer is no. And uh, you can actually show this algebraically as well. Um, so when you have something like V naught squared, they can really be separated into V naught X squared plus V naught Y squared. That's basically the statement of Pythagorean theorem from something like this. So, uh, so you can do that separation, uh, work through all the algebra, um, and you'll see that, oh yeah, if we separate out the X component, then, then it doesn't matter. Um, so, which also goes to demonstrate the validity of the way we are treating situations like this in uh, when we are doing kinematics. So yeah, uh, this is a kind of nice tie back to the kinematics questions that you used to do. Uh, and you are uh, hopefully beginning to see that um, the new tool that you are, we are introducing, conservation of energy, it's a lot easier. Uh, that's why when you ask uh, like a chat GPT about questions like this, it'll try to use conservation of energy. And when you do that, when we are doing kinematics, that's a red flag for me. Like we haven't covered this wonderful tool yet. How are you using it? <laughs> so.